things I've observed in church life. It happens in corporate life as well. But essentially two things. Number one, when someone is corrected in church, most of the time they leave church. My experience is if someone has to be corrected or talked to or coached, a lot of times I would say a large majority of the time they leave. And number two, when they leave, some of their friends leave. Wow, how does that happen? Well, interesting scenario. Let's say that happens, obviously, Correction is for their good, correct? We want them to win. As a pastor, I believe in people. I want, that's why I'm here. I want to see them win. So they have a choice. They can receive. And we have people that, you got to understand, life is fluid. You know, we have people come on staff, off staff, come back on staff. Our staff members know the rule here. Job description, whatever it takes. Our job, our staff members all wear different hats. They've moved, some of our staff members have been in 20 different positions over 20 years. They move around. And we tell them, you know, flexible. You know, it's like, don't own that position because we may move you. You know, just do what it takes. Be on the team, right? Just be fluid. Let, we, you have to be able to kind of work together as a team. And so what happens is if someone is corrected in life, this happens in corporate America too, they, they get upset about it. And they began to tell people about it and gossip about it. And they began to taint the opinion of others because I can't stand up here and say, listen, let me tell you the honest truth why this happened, right? I mean, I can't stand up here and say, you know, we had a little situation with a little, little Susie over here or Johnny or whoever. And I know some of you are hearing about that because they're telling everyone, let me tell you all the gory stuff that why we had to talk to them. And I lay out a list and hand it out. That would be wrong, Right? Right? That's what gossip does. Except gossip only has one half the story. And so you do not want to gossip. You do not want to take the offense of someone. You do not want to jump into a story you have half the side to. You do not want to give the enemy that kind of territory. You do not, do not, do not, do not. The enemy will play you like a fiddle because you don't have the whole story. And if you play that fiddle, what you're really saying is you're training people to distrust authorities. The very pastor that God brings people to the church to receive from, you've now tainted and you'll be responsible for that. They can't receive. Employers, you know, have you ever met someone that's always someone's fault? Like my boss did me wrong, that boss did me wrong, this pastor did me wrong, my parents did me wrong, my ex did me wrong, did me wrong, did me wrong, did me wrong, did me wrong. After a while, stop, stop. What part of the story are you in? <laughs> what part of the story are you, are you in here? There's a common denominator. I know we're all not perfect, but somehow you're missing part of the story here. We all need corrected, friend. It's not a negative thing. We need, we need to be humble and allow God to help us, Right? Let's say that you came in today and the music stopped, praise and worship stopped, and no one came up. And after a while, one of my ushers, Bob, comes up here and he goes, Gary quit. He's had enough. <laughs> He's had enough. He quit. Now, as a pastor, if that really happened, that would harm people's faith because Young believers or someone here that's going through hard times would think, hey, if pastor can't handle it, what's the chances I can handle it, right? And that would hurt people's faith. Understand this, God is never going to promote you someplace your character will not keep you. The testing you endure behind the scenes, when God tests you, your attitudes, how you handle yourself with the natural is so important so that he knows and you know and you receive training and correction so that when you stand in a place of authority, you're not going to quit every five minutes. Say thank you, pastor. That helps a lot. <laughs> you know, he started television. I didn't want to do television. I mean... I, don't, I, had no, I did not want to do any speck of television. I didn't want to pay for it either. But God, you know, God's always polite. He asks us, you know, he basically says, you know, I'd like you to do this. And he dealt with me, you know, and worked with me. And I said, yes. Why? Because he knew I wouldn't quit. Does God know you won't quit? See, 
You're testing. What is it telling God? What is it telling yourself? Well, I can always quit. I can always go someplace else. There's a lot of churches. There's a lot of companies. There's a lot of other businesses. I have options. Yeah, you have options that are limited by your character. How do you handle your place you're in right now? Okay. (laughs) Proverbs chapter 9, verse 8. Do not correct a scoffer lest he hate you. Rebuke a wise man and he will love you. Here is a test. (laughs) When you're corrected or you know someone that's corrected, if they hate the person that corrects them and they're talking negative, just go, scoffer, scoffer. (laughs) (laughs) Definition of scoffer is someone who jeers or mocks or treats something with contempt or ridicules something. They're ridiculing the correction. They're ridiculing that the fact they could possibly be wrong. They're mocking that you, me, something wrong, I made a mistake. No, they're a scoffer. But someone who's wise would actually embrace correction. The Bible says they would love you. Why? Because their heart is to advance. Hey, look, I don't have all together. Tell me what you know. You're obviously someplace I'm not. You've, you know, help me, teach me, mentor me, Right? They're going to love you because you took the time to instruct them, mentor them, because they know they need that to get where they want to go. And they're going to love you. In fact, I'm going to give you a homework assignment that goes past that. Your assignment this week is to go to whoever you report to in life, your employer, whatever, and ask them. Go up to them and ask them, what can I do to better my service to you? What can I do to help this company? What can I do to personally serve you, to help you do a better job here? But Pastor Gary, you don't understand. I hate my boss. (laughs) I didn't ask you that. I said, do it unto the Lord. I mean, if Jesus can die on a cross, you certainly can put up with your boss. (laughs) Right? Go to your boss and say, hey, And if you had a wrong attitude, you go and repent. You know, I've had a lousy attitude to this job. I've been talking about you. I mean, well, you got to be careful not saying that maybe. (laughs) But, you know, I'm making a change. I want to serve you. I want to be the best employee you have. I'm going to try my best, but you know, I'll fall short. I want you to promise me, Mr. Employer, will you help me? Will you tell me if I fall short? Will you tell me if I have a bad attitude? Will you tell me what I need to learn to help reach another level of your confidence? What class I can take? What can I do to to step into a higher place of responsibility? Because I am going to serve you. That would probably about make their day. (laughs) Don't you think? It's like, really? Am I? He's going to say, whoa. She's going to say, oh, that's awesome. Listen, here's the danger. If you train yourself to second guess every leader God puts in your life or second guess every authority on the planet, you're left with nothing because God is the one that put the authorities in place. You don't have to agree with what the president does. You don't have to agree with what the governor does. You don't have to agree with what police officers do or the military does or teachers do or pastors do. But the office they hold should be respected by you. Because if you lose the office, you're kind of getting it blended together. The person is not the office. office, If you lose the office, you lose all of it. Yes, there's problems. Sure, they're people. And they may be doing wrong things. But that doesn't mean you throw the office out the window because the authority is your only hope. It's God's system. It's going over well here today. Great, great. You understand what I'm saying? God is the one that sets, and he will deal with the ones that are wrong. There's there's systems to deal with that. But the bottom line is we need to understand that we are called of God to honor authorities. And if we don't honor authorities, there's nothing left. Because how we honor physical authorities, our employers, who we report to, is a reflection on how we would respect God. Just telling you. The good news is, thank you, wait just a second. (laughs) The good news is, there's a great future for you. 
God is trying to get you someplace, friend. He is not trying. He's not on your case. He loves you. He is trying to get you someplace that is so much bigger than you that, you know, you've got to submit to some training. You've got, he's got a great plan for your life. And if you will submit to him and trust him, even though you don't trust people, trust him to lead you, he will do so. And you will be in a place that, as the Bible says, you will be honored. Hi, I'm Gary Cassie, and you will never fulfill your destiny until you fix your money thing. Visit GaryCassie.com, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below for more amazing weekly videos on fixing your money thing, and thanks for watching.